can think about mining as having a pile of money or a stream of money. First, you need to turn a pile of money into a stream of money, meaning passive income. And then when you have a good amount of passive income coming in every month, then you can splurge on yourself and on expensive cars and stuff, because at that point, you are financially set for life. So how did you get into the space? Let's talk about your, your whole journey. I remember one guy was doing a webinar. He was doing uh, fan pages on Facebook for NFL jerseys. I looked at the webinar, I reverse engineered everything he was doing and started making some good money. How you liking the affiliate world, man? How's it been here in Budapest? It's nice. This is actually my third time at Budapest, but it's good to see the affiliate world grow. My first affiliate world was in Bangkok in 2017. It just opens up your mind to a whole different thing. You see where the money is flowing. Affiliates are actually some of the smartest in terms of micros in the world because usually, you know, the media buying teams for big companies, they work on the budget of the company, whereas an affiliate has to work with his own money. Therefore, we, we tend to be some of the best internet marketers in the world. All the things you talked about, which is working the best for you? You know, I just enjoy the, the affiliate game overall. It's a very fulfilling game, I would say, because there are always new challenges. You know, it's like picking a favorite child. You can't. Yeah. You know, I just love the game and hopefully I'll be able to do this for a long time. What's a common mistake? you see people make in this industry. You know, we tend to chase shiny objects. Paper call offer here, comparison page there. It doesn't work like that. You gotta be extremely focused if you wanna make it in this industry. Get ready to level your shit up with the LFG Show. We travel the globe to bring you heavy hitters from all walks of life. We've been talking some serious business from the best digital marketers, government contracting experts, to top athletic and celebrity doctors. We've got it all covered. We're talking to guys who've cashed in for billions with a B. And the best thing is we're just getting started. So hold on tight. We're about to crank it up a notch. Get ready for next level networking and masterminds within the LFG community. Scared money don't make no money or honey. Hit the subscribe button. Drop a like, leave a comment, and let's fucking go. We got the fucking heavy eaters out here. I got my man San Olanik from Olenek Media Group. Hope I pronounced that properly. I think I fucked up, I apologize. Doing a good job. The guys are heavier. Listen, if you like our shit, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Let's fucking go. That's how we make this shit work, man. It's part of the Let's algorithm, go. man. You gotta fucking, we gotta get with the algorithm. We're gonna keep growing this shit. Bro, pleasure having you on the show. You too. You seen him on the cover of CEO Times. He's hanging out some heavy hitters. We're gonna talk about that shit pretty soon. Jeff moved to Puerto Rico. We're gonna talk about that. But first, what I wanna talk about with you is how you like in the affiliate world, man? How's it been here in Budapest? It's nice. This is actually my third time at Budapest, but uh, the last time I was here, I was about 16, so I don't remember much. Yeah. So this is the first time where I'm like more mature, and uh, it's, it's good to see the affiliate world grow. I remember my first, first affiliate uh, kind of conference back in 2015 in mm -hmm. London. It was called STM at that time, and it's, it's interesting how Lorenzo and the team were able to grow to such a you know fantastic uh, and big event. Yeah, it is. My, my first affiliate world was in uh, Bangkok in 2017. I didn't know shit about anything, you know? I mean, I would go, I went to LeedsCon, Las Vegas, I went to Affiliate Summit, and you can navigate those as a first timer. This fucking place in Bangkok was all about crypto this, porn this, dating this. I'm like, what the fuck is dating? I didn't know it. Would, it just opens up your mind yeah. to a whole different thing. And I think that's the benefit of the beauty of coming to these shows is that you see where the money is flowing. And back then, crypto, Bitcoin was at 3,000 back in Dece or 2017 when I went to Bangkok, yep, yep. December. You see where it is now, it's 20X. So I really think there's a value to coming to these shows because you see where the money's flowing. And from like an investment perspective or a business perspective, you could jump on trends a little bit earlier. Would you agree with that? Agreed 100%. Yeah. And I also will say that affiliates are actually some of the smartest internet market markers in the world because usually, you know, the media buying teams for big companies, they work on the budget of the company, whereas then affiliate has to work with his own money yeah. or her own money. So we need to be extremely, uh, careful, right, with how we optimize what we do, and therefore we, we tend to be some of the best internet marketers in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, and I think people won't talk about that enough. We take that, we take that for granted. These affiliate marketers are really geniuses. They're really gifted with what they do. To get someone to, we're, we're in a world where we're competing for everyone's attention, and there's always this thing, that thing. There's so many messages nowadays going on, so to get someone to actually stop what the hell they're doing, to click on that leader, to make a phone call, to buy a product, 
I mean, it's a gift, man. And oh, that's yeah. why oh, yeah. the sky's the limit when it comes to this business. 100%. Yeah. And if you noticed, a lot of the trends are started by affiliates and then the 100%. big companies will pick it up. And uh, so it's, it's a, a fantastic industry to you're, be yeah, in. Yeah, you're 100% right about that. I didn't think of it. We're tre trendsetters at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, for man. sure. So how did you get into the space? Let's talk about your, your whole journey. So it's a long story, but the short version will be, I started back in uh, 2011. Uh, it was, uh, I remember one guy was doing a webinar. Shout out to Andrew, I don't remember the last name, but anyway, he was doing we'll a, a picture in the fact, fan it? pages uh, on, uh, on Facebook uh, for NFL jerseys. Oh, wow. So I remember I, I looked at the webinar, I reverse engineered everything he was doing. I started doing it myself and started making some, some good money. And that's how I started, uh, you know, my affiliate journey. And what were you doing before that? Oh man, just, uh, well, I was a startup founder. I was actually one of the uh, founders of CrowdChess, uh, oh, wow. which went very viral. It was featured by Wall Street Journal, TechCrunch, uh, Mashable at that time was big, it was a big blog. Yeah. Uh, so the idea was usually crowd is, I mean, uh, chess is played one-on-one. -on -one. So my idea is what happens when thousands will play against thousands like a social experiment. Wow. So the project went extremely viral. We had a fascinating game, for example, with the Grandmaster versus the crowd. Mm. And it was an interesting uh, time in my life. Yeah, Man, that's crazy, man. I, I, didn't, I didn't know that about you. That's what I love about these interviews. You really learn about people. And, and it's, it's inspirational to think that who would ever think of creating, getting chess together and getting people to compete and go viral. I mean, that, that's, that's amazing. So 2011, uh, started your journey and then what did you do after that like how did you, you grow and so uh, we started off with facebook uh email submits uh nfl jerseys some other jerseys and then we started transitioning into i remember we we're doing section 8 stuff mm -hmm. uh we had a big uh, site in the section 8 space a big big email list i think we had like two hundred fifty thousand subscribers sending people uh, open waiting list alerts across the country for section 8 uh and that did ver very well with adsense and then one day, uh, AdSense just uh, banned the account and I lost a lot of money. Mm. Uh, and uh, I had to, uh, you know, transition to something else. I think we started doing comparison pages at that time. And uh, yeah, business started to take off again. And uh, here we are. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So, so what are you working on right now? We talked offline, but let, let the audience know what you're working on. So right now, we are primarily focused on three things, I would say. First, first one is uh, public records. We have two big uh, sites in the public record space. So arrest records, criminal records, stuff like that. We drive traffic to uh, Truthfinder and Instant Checkmate. Then we also do um, uh, comparison pages. We have a network of different websites in, in that space. Uh, pet insurance, commercial diet programs, things like that. And we also do paper calls. So we do health insurance. We do uh, auto warranty, home warranty, stuff like that. Yeah. Which of those, I mean, and those are, that's fascinating because, you know, I've seen those sites like Truthfinder and everything. And uh, I, I, I find that pretty amazing. I guess as people are very, um, I don't know what the fuck the word is, man. They're very curious about other people or they just want to fucking dig up dirt on other people. I don't know, but it's, it's a residual model, right? You, they sign up. Let's say I want to know more about you. I can go on there. It'll tell me if you've been arrested, if you've done this or done that, right? So, and then, then they're done in a residual word for as long until they cancel. Right, that's how it works. Yeah, so a lot of the a lot of the times people obviously want to find out information and then they'll cancel. Um, the problem is sometimes they'll forget that they signed up, and so this yeah. industry tends to have a, a chargeback problem. Yep. But uh, you know, we, we we actually thought about creating our own offer, but when we did the research, we realized that it's you know it's not worth uh, the effort in our case. But uh, a lot of the times, for example, uh, it's it could be related to dating. You know, if a girl started dating a guy, she wants to check if he has criminal that. history or, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Or let's say neighbors move in, uh, the old neighbors want to check who the new neighbors are. So there's a lot of different scenarios yeah. where people want to find out information about somebody else. That's amazing. I heard uh, a lot of women nowadays in America, before they go on a date, they're asking for the, what's your credit score? But you can fucking lie. Maybe, maybe there's a way to tie your credit scores <laughs> before you go on a date, you know? What's your fucking credit score so I don't waste my time? I know you're financially oh. doing it right. Yo, what's up, my man? We're getting love from the crowd here. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, uh, yeah, I've, I've heard that too. Yeah. Some women are tricky. <laughs> but you know what, man, fuck it. I mean, I, I have a daughter, she's 12 years old. Yeah, I might have her fucking use that technique, man. I want to make sure she's not going with a fucking deadbeat motherfucker. Right? However, you got to be careful, right? Because 
you know, a lot of good people get into difficult times. Yeah. You know, for example, you can be a business owner that goes through a That's rough true. patch. That's true. You lose your credit score. Yeah. You know, and then the, let's say if a girl will check your credit score at that time, she will think you're some some kind of a bum. Yeah. But in reality, I've had this situation in my life too. You know, yeah. where oh, you got a great credit score, then it falls down, and then it no. goes back up my, again. So my fucking credit score every two or three years, some bullshit happens. I I. I got like, like, it might be like a fucking medical bill. It was like $8. I'll be, I'll pay that shit someday. Never fucking pay it. $8 fucking medical bill dropped my shit 60 points. Yeah. Every three years, some bullshit like that happens, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I was in Greenville, South Carolina. We had a call center there that we moved to Columbia. And the bottom line is that um, I don't fucking know. We paid the rent or whatever. And it was an auto pay. It got off auto pay. And I, I think I had $100 I owe for some shit. Didn't fucking pay it. They said that's collections. But like, that, that's what happens. You're right. Exactly. And, and my credit score is still good. Don't get me wrong. But there's life scenarios that happen. Business people are very fucking busy. Yep. We don't do this intentionally, but you'll miss shit sometimes yep, and you get yep. fucked up. That is a good point. You know, yep. you gotta um, you dig into it. Don't just uh, accuse someone or think they're a deadbeat, you know, if you check the credit score. Just find out what they're doing. Dig deeper, right? You have several filters, have not some, just one. I have several filters. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I have all the things you talked about, you mentioned comparison pages, you mentioned all the home warranty, paper work. Which is working the best for you? Wh or wh which do you enjoy the most? Or what's, what's more working the most in terms of ROI? You know, I just enjoy the, the affiliate game overall. It's uh, it's, a, it's a very fulfilling uh, game, I would say, because uh, there are always new challenges with offers, with accounts. Uh, you need to build relationships, travel around the world to, to see different people, make uh, different deals. So uh, I wouldn't say, you know, it's like picking a favorite child. You can't. Yeah. You know, I just love the game, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to do this for a long time. I, I, I yeah. love it. You can tell you love the game, man. And yeah. one, one thing I want the audience know about you, you're very, I think, financially savvy. I don't. I see. I think that you, you really, you, you, you study the game. You, you know how to manage your money pretty well. And I think that in our industry, I don't know if you know Dennis Gonchar. He's, he's guys a great. I, I, I heard about. He it. was at Columbia Con with us, and he talked about being frugal with your money because in our industry, especially with Instagram and social media, man. I mean, we talked about you were in Dubai recently. You know, and you see, motherfucking, everybody wants to live this lifestyle. They want the Lamborghini. Bro, I moved to Miami, I swear to God. You know, I had a Lexus GX, had for three years, paid off. We got a Range Rover. I'm seeing motherfuckers in Lamborghinis. I'm seeing these Rolls Royces. And I start Googling, uh, maybe I need a Rolls Royce. As you start thinking about this shit, but like, you know, I don't fucking need it, but it gets in your head. So I feel like you're above that, man. You know, and I, and I think that that was great advice that Dennis gave because your money, one uh, one one dollar that we have here can turn into three, ten dollars, right? So when you're pissing it away, that's less money that you can multiply later on. But can you talk about this? I feel like we've had conversations about that, and people need to talk more about that in our space. Good point. So yeah. the way I see it is, we as affiliates, and I've trust me, I've made this mistake before too, where you make make a lot of money, you spend everything on. Uh, well, we got the polar bear coming. Uh -huh. It's a financially savvy. Pull the bill, look at that. Yeah, LMG show, you never know what the fuck to expect on this thing. Hope this guy don't piss on me. So, anyway. I've made this mistake too, where you make a lot of money and then you spend it on uh, materialistic things, yeah. you know, expensive watches, expensive clothes, but then I came to a realization that uh, th that's not the smart way to do business. So now what I try to do is, or the way I think about these things is that you can think about money as having a pile of money or a river of money, a stream mm. of money. So. First, you need to turn a pile of money into a stream of money, meaning passive income. And then when you have a good amount of passive income coming in every month, then you can splurge on yourself and on, on, on the expensive cars and stuff. Because at that point, you are financially set for life, right? Let's say you have a, I don't know, $200,000, $250,000 check coming in every month, passive income. Bro, buy a Lambo, buy a Rolls Royce, it doesn't matter because next month, guess what? Another $250,000 yeah. check is coming in. So it's, you have to be smart about money, money management. So I know a lot of you guys are doing paper call. A lot of you guys have call centers. We got AI in the house. We got Neil Billick. He's the founder and the CEO of All Rise AI. They're doing big things. I'm a user of his service. We are coming in immediately for Xing contact rates for clients. What we found in my BPO when I ran it and deployed the AI was we had 30 second wait times before the deployment between connections. And my guys were making about 500 connections a day times 30 seconds. We were wasting 250 minutes a day per head in a call center. That's four hours. That's half, four the hours, day. Yeah. half their day yeah. or half their wages being spent on them waiting for a call. Yeah. What, the reason your wait time's high is when you're calling out, you have an abandon rate you have to stand 
margin of 3% that's programmed in your dialer. If the AI is weeding that out, and I think that's right. the benefit, it's, it's collapsing time frames, it's helping your top producers produce, which is what you want them to do. People are afraid AI is gonna replace call center agents, and it may, but right now, use it to maximize your human resource. So leveraging it for the tools it can be to do exactly what you're saying. Let the humans do what they can do best. Let the AI get cursed out. Yeah, yeah I love what you said about the river, and that's that's so so true. And you know, read Rich Dad Poor Dad, you, and you read all these successful people that have they got the money works for them is what it comes down to, yeah. right? And we make we the, the, our nature of our business, man, it, it's it's streaks. It's almost like stocks, man, and investments. Like the stock market will have a run, a bull run. Then there's a bear market. Yep. You're gonna have bear markets in our in our game, right? And that's why we try to pivot and have multiple streams of income. But you're gonna have that money work for you, and Correct. and that's what I've seen. I mean, I. At Columbia Con, we had, I'll shout out Anker, who owns Flight Calls. The guy reads about investing. He has all these properties. Like, the guy is like, he's such a sponge. And I'm, I'm realizing that, man, because, bro, it's like, you got these fucking ebbs and flows. But if you're good with that money, <clears throat> you turn it out to a river. You're set for life. Your kids are set for life. Now you have a real legacy you can leave, man. Exactly. And, you, and yeah. your kids will have something they can do. So I love that you said that. And, and you know, interestingly enough, you've seen this post that I posted on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, I personally know a few billionaires. Yeah. Uh, one of this them, is great. I'm glad you're talking yeah, about this. Yeah. One of them is a Tim Draper. Fantastic guy. What I like about Tim Draper is he's a multi-billionaire. He can buy anything. You know, he can have anything he wants, right? You know, from, from a materialistic point of view. But he's so simple. He's so down to earth that... I know for me, it draws, draws me to people like that because, you know, in our industry, we have a lot of uh, quote unquote ballers, but the, the net worth is less than 1% of a multi-billionaire, yeah. right? So you got to keep things in perspective sure. and understand that there are levels to the game. Exactly. Uh, and the people who get to get to the top of the sort of the pyramid tend to be because they've been through a lot of shit in their life. They've been through a lot of experiences they tend to actually be much more humble than, than people who are just starting out and have run, you know, yeah. came into money. So that's, that was an interesting observation for me. Uh, no, that, that's amazing what you said. And uh, this, is why, this, <laughs> this is why I love, I love Stan because he gets it, right? And you get it through experience. I mean, yeah. it's what it comes in. You've been, you know, you made your mistakes. We all made a mistake, but you learned. You, but at some point, you got to learn. And, this ties into the next thing I want to talk about. You moved to Puerto Rico, right? Mm -hmm. That's how you met Tim Draper was in Puerto Rico. Uh, no, what? actually, I met Tim oh. Draper before Puerto Rico. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. Okay, cool. Uh, we have an interesting story. Yeah, so, let's talk about that. Uh, Tim is obviously a big uh, crypto guy, big Bitcoin fan. Uh, and uh, I, when I lived in California, my driver's license plate on my car was a BTC fan. And so, you know, I, I told Tim about it, showed him the pictures. He really loved it. So we kind of hit it off with him exchanged emails and uh you know that's how our relationship with him started but yeah. think about his license plate drew the attention we talk about getting people's attention online to get clicks to buy products or whatever you had your, your license plate btc fan because you really are and it, it, it attracted his attention but you know what's interesting that was a strategic move on my part i i was attending a program uh, in california for blockchain executives ex executive blockchain program and i knew that tim is a big bitcoin fan and i was and so I thought, why not get a BTC license plate to show it to him so that he will remember me? So it was a strategic wow, move. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Sometimes you got to be high level, guys. Well, listen, that's, yeah. you, you, life is about probabilities, right? So you, you do something like that, the probability is going to get his attention. He's going to like it. And then boom, you're connected. Exactly. I've done plenty of things like that, too. It doesn't always work. But like when it works, it's like, fuck, man. It, it's like a psychological anchor. Yeah. He will never forget, you know, because yeah. you have an anchor that he will remember you because of. Exactly. You know what I mean? And now yeah. you're talking. I mean, you're talking about a billionaire. Like It's hard to get access exactly. to like those people. Yeah. You, you're his boy. He'll hit up to you. He'll hit you up. You hit him up, and you can talk to him in confidence about whatever. To get that advice, that's people who pay tons of money for yeah. that kind of advice, yeah. and you have access to that. Yeah. Is what yeah. it comes down yeah. to. Yeah, you gotta be. You gotta be smart with, uh, you know, with your time and with your opportunities. I'll give you one more example. For example, uh, when I lived in San Francisco, I went. I really wanted a meeting with one investor for one startup we, we were working with, and I remember, I specifically at one conference asked a funny question so that he will remember me. And afterwards, when I wrote him an email, I said, this is Stan, the guy who asked the funny question, wow. so that he will remember me. That's so you gotta, awesome. you gotta be strategic. Man, you give me, yeah. you give me some good fucking advice. I thought I had all the tricks, man. Guys, this is the fucking fire you get from LFG Show. Like, comment, subscribe, share, motherfuckers. You want more of it? Let's go. This is how we do it. Uh, we're not done yet, though. Ah, uh, okay. So check it out. We're yes. talking about Puerto Rico, right? Yes, sir. Proximity. 
tax advantages, right? We're talking about being good for your money. How has Puerto Rico benefited you? I and mean, first of all, how did you decide to move there? Like, where did this all come about and how has it benefited you? So my best friend and business partner moved to Puerto Rico first. And then he told me, Stan, you know, this is a fantastic uh, island. You know, we can swim here every day, you know, warm Atlantic Ocean. The food is great, mm -hmm. uh, high uh, level networking opportunities. And so I thought about it. I went for a reconnaissance trip back in, I think it was June or July 2022. I liked it and I thought I, I can live here. So uh, I decided to, to move the business there and uh, the rest is history. I love it there. I mean, obviously you kind of, you know, the fact that you have to be on the island for 183 days out of the year, that's a bit of, uh, of an annoyance, I would say, mm. but it's, you know, other than that, it's a fantastic island, good people, uh, great food. So nothing to complain about overall. I, I got to imagine, you know, I, I went to Puerto Rico with my family a year and a half ago the first time. I haven't been since and I want to go. I mean, my, my friend Maury lives there. I got a big solar client there that I, 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 have to, I got to visit, but I would imagine living there, the networking has got to be insane because you're talking about, you know, a lot of successful business people that are there yeah. for the tax advantages and weather, whatever. And to be in that close proximity, I mean, there's got to be a lot of business that can be yeah. made there, right? Yeah. Well, so Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico serves as sort of a filter for high level uh, entrepreneurs, right? Yes. If you live in Puerto Rico, that means you're doing something right. Uh, and everybody understands that on the island. So if you go to, uh, you know, different meetups, uh, people look at you already as you are, you know, you are uh, successful. It's not like you're pretending to yeah, be somebody. Yeah, wearing like a Rolex or whatever. Correct. Yeah, you don't, need, here, to, you yeah. know, you don't, don't need, need a Rolex a flex, or yeah. a car to flex, you know? Yeah. Like the fact that you live in Puerto Rico is a flex. I love that. You know? That's yeah. awesome, man. Listen, you, you just dropped a lot of knowledge here. This is amazing, man. How can, how can, how can people find out more about it? Well, first of all, what are, you, what are you hoping to gain from the audience? How can they help you or what do you, what do you think? Can you repeat the question? No. What are you looking to gain for? How can the audience help you? Or what are you looking to gain at the uh, show? Or? Well, obviously, at this point of, of uh, my affiliate career, it's it's more more about meeting uh, old friends than you know than anything else. But uh, always interested in new uh, business opportunities. So if you have anything interesting in the paper call space or public records or comparison pages that you know work, definitely send me some information, and we can work together. And uh, as far as finding me, you can find me on uh, Instagram. Uh, my name is Stan Olenek. So on Instagram, Stan Olenek, and you'll find my page. What's, from your doing this so long, what's a common mistake you see people make in this industry when they're, when they're starting out? Uh, I think, okay, that is a good question. And something that I, I learned from my friend uh, Alex Tew, who is the founder of Calm.com, a multi-billion dollar app. You know, Calm, Calm, Calm. 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 Oh yeah, C I think I got that app. It's yeah. like a meditation app. So I know this, this, this guy, he lives in San Francisco. And I never forget this lesson that I got from Kim. One time we were at Whole Foods in San Francisco talking about his app. And I sent him an email with a few ideas uh, to improve his, his, his app. He said, Stan, really great ideas. However, right now we're focused on user retention. Yeah. And as the time progressed, I understood that Alex is extremely focused on, let's say, making something work first. And then when he gets the results he needs at, 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 you know, in certain situations, then he moves to something else. So the lesson for uh, newer affiliates is stay focused, guys. Don't, you know, we tend to uh, chase shiny objects, you know, paper call offer here, comparison page there. It doesn't work like that. You gotta be extremely focused if you wanna make it in this industry. Uh, master a traffic source, master a campaign, and then once you uh, corner it, corner your part of the market, then you start expanding and moving on because otherwise uh, you'll you'll be a jack of all trades and a master of none. Dude, fucking fantastic. You, you know, Bruce Lee had a fascinating quote. He said, I fear not the man who practiced 10,000 kicks one time. I fear the man who practiced one kick 10,000 times. Yeah. So you got a master traffic source and everything else, and then you move to something else. Yeah, that's such great advice. And you're right, there's shiny object syndrome is no fucking joke. I mean, I get it too. People come up to me and listen, I love the markets. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trading every freaking day. People come up, someone came up to me yesterday, I already got this idea. Oh, I got to marry this somehow. I got to do something. But, but no, I can't. I, I don't have the fucking time to do that shit right now. I'm too fucking busy. Yeah. When I have the time, yeah, we'll do it. I got to focus on what my my river is right yep, now, right? Yep, and, yep. You know, and this is what I got to do. Yep. So the point is that that's very true, especially when you come to this show, you see a lot of fucking, you know, there's, there's these booths that are, I feel like the booths at Affiliate World are way like crazier and more kind of sexier than the booth at a Lee's Con or Affiliate Summit, man. And that doesn't mean it's better or not, but it gets your attention, man, is what it does. I mean, it's easy to get side-checked. Oh, I got to try this, but yeah, focus on one thing, make it work. If you can make one thing work, if you can make $1 and 
in a campaign, you can make a million dollars, a billion dollars, yeah. right? Is what yeah. it comes down yeah. to. You know what they say, the, the million is always the hardest. Yeah. But to get to the million, you got to be focused. Otherwise, it's, it's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. So that's, uh, that's advice for, I mean, that's advice for maybe someone just getting into the game or someone that's been doing it for a while. And I, I want to talk about this too. I feel like the past year in our, Neutra seems like it's blowing up. Like I'm seeing people in Neutra killing it right now. A lot of people went from Legion to Neutra. People in Paper Coal are kind of all over. The like ACA had a lot of changes going on. It's been super, super volatile, right? Mm. If so, there's somebody that's taking a step back, maybe they're used to making, I don't know, 100 grand a day, 200 grand a day, and they're still making good money. Maybe they're making 25, 50, but they've taken a step back financially. What's your advice to someone like that? My advice is don't rush things because uh, things tend to fall into, into place by themselves. Well, I believe in God, so I believe God controls everything. Sometimes God allows, allows certain, certain things to happen to teach some lessons. Mm. And then when we get through the trials and tribulations, then God will open new opportunities and new doors for us. So it's a process you got to go through. And instead of praying to God, take the trial away, pray, God help me learn the lesson so that I don't, I don't have to repeat it and open new opportunities for me in the future. Yeah. That's great. It's a learning yeah. lesson. Another question I want to ask you, sounds like you, 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 you focus a lot on self-development, self-improvement, right? Books, what's, if you could recommend one book to the audience here to read or an audible or whatever, which one would that be? Well, let's, let's divide it into two categories, okay. spiritual and, uh, and everything else. So spiritual, obviously the Bible, uh, I'll be a very bad Christian if I don't recommend to read the Bible. So obviously the, the Bible uh, from a spiritual perspective and then from a business perspective, there are many books that I like, but some of my favorites would have to be, uh, let's see, uh, from Good to Great was a fantastic book that I read. Great book. Uh, another fantastic book that I always recommend is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That is another great one. Uh, what else? The Lean Startup by, by Eric uh, Rice is, is a great one. There's a lot of uh, books I can recommend. Yeah. yeah. If you guys are interested, hit me up on uh, uh, Instagram. I'll send you, let's say, my top 10 list for the books that uh, yeah. I uh, like. And I'm glad you said that. I, I, I was going to say them in, in, about your, your, your social media. Your social media is great because you talk a lot about these lessons, you know, lessons learned, the ups and downs and everything. And I've, I've got a lot of good tidbits from what, from looking Appreciate at it. Appreciate it, yeah. You know, you, 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 you become who, what you consume, what you eat. You eat like bad food, you're going to be in bad shape. Yep. You eat good food, you'll be healthy. You consume good content that helps you improve, you're going to do better. So that's one thing I like about my feed, man. I got a lot of fucking heavy hitters, guys like you that are next level. And it helps me do that. And I try to do the same thing as well. Okay, final question, man. This has been nothing but fire. This might be the most important question I asked, and I'll tell you why. I put Stan, or you put us, we, we took a picture at the, we were in an invite-only secret uh, meetup that happens every time there's an affiliate world. You know, and you were there, I was there. We took a picture, and you you posted it, and I reposted it. And, bro, I got hit up. I got hit up by a lot of females saying, bro, that's a good-looking guy. Is he single? I don't know. I asked a bunch of questions, right? So, it's out there, right? I mean, I'm sure it you're, did happen. You're, you're putting me into an uncomfortable position. Okay, well, you got to be uncomfortable to grow, uh, bro. Well, <laughs> let's let's say I'm uh, I'm talking with one girl uh, in Moscow, uh, but right now we had a misunderstanding with her, and right now we are uh, not communicating. Yeah. But I hope it works out with her. So uh, Yo, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. let's see. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So let, let me ask you. Um, that wasn't my question, though. My question to you is going to be. And I'm glad you answered. What's your red flag in a woman? Oh man, that is a good question. Oh, uh, red flag in a woman. I think uh, the biggest red flag would be if she immediately shows propensity to materialistic things. Instead of finding out who you are as a person, your heart, you know, who you are as a human being. If she immediately starts to be interested in uh, getting something from you, yeah. expensive dinners, jewelry, blah, blah, blah. Listen, there's nothing wrong with gifts and, and expensive dinners or whatever, but if that's all you care about, I'm not interested. So that's yeah. a, that's definitely a red flag. Yeah. Because you'll be an ATM machine for the, the rest of your life. She's fucking up the river. She's yeah. putting a dam in the river, man. Yeah. Fuck that shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. Listen, we did Columbia Con and we invited people. You come to the next one, man, you're there. Uh, we, we want givers. We don't want takers, man. The yeah. more you give, the more you're going to get. So exactly. she's there taking, taking, fuck that. Big red yeah. flag. None yeah. of that exactly. shit. Exactly, yeah. Every so often, but not all the time. All yeah. right, another question. I don't know. I don't, it's, 
we, I'm going to ask if it's about an affiliate or about in business, but what, what's your red flag about a, 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 either an affiliate or a business partner or, like, or someone you want to do business with? Biggest red flag. Uh, to me, I really appreciate integrity in people. Um, in fact, that's something that I learned from my mentor. Um, I had a mentor who, who was very close to a billionaire status, a big real estate developer in California. Uh, and he, he told me he's the type of dude, they make a $30 million deal. Mm. It's a handshake deal. He doesn't wow. sign anything. He just, it's all about integrity. So yeah. if I see that, you know, people will promise something and not deliver, that's a huge red flag because usually if you are not, uh, how to say this, if you're not careful in small things, right? If you're misleading people in small things, trust me, when big things arrive, they'll fail too. Yeah. How you do one thing is how you do everything. That's pretty, exactly. essentially what yeah. you're saying. It's like uh, it's uh, in in a uh, in a logic world. It's called deductive logic. By a drop of water, you can conclude that there's an ocean. Yeah, yeah. I love it, man. Nothing but great advice, guys. This shit was fucking fire. I say it again. You like this shit? Like, comment, subscribe, share. Let your friends know the knowledge that Stan just dropped. He showed, talked about creating rivers of income. Who the fuck's talking about this shit? Next level shit. He gave me the books to fucking read so you can make more money. Good shit. He told you his red flags in a woman. So if you think he's a good looking guy, you're interested, you don't, you're not one of those red flags, hit him up. We're gonna, we might get you married on this show. We might be uh, responsible for your future babies, man. Uh, well, we'll yeah, see. Man, look at that. <laughs> That'll be awesome, by the way. Yeah. All right, bro. Sounds good, brother. Thank you so much for your time. Let's fucking go, baby. Let's, let's go. Well, Appreciate man, it. That Appreciate was awesome. your time. That was one of the Thank better you. ones we did, bro. Oh, like, comment, subscribe, motherfuckers.